Welcome everyone. My name is Cristobal Sosa and I am with Next Up Calgary. And I'm really excited to hear because we are at the Public Interest Alberta Conference, a just and fair Alberta for all, making it happen. And I'm joined today by, uh, by Sarah Haynes from the Chicago Teachers Union. And we have a few questions that we would like to ask her. So welcome. Thank you. Um, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit, what are the key messages you brought today in your presentation to share with everyone? Um, one, the, the big aspects of our success in the last five years has been a multi-prong effect. Um, so we are a teachers union and we have to take care of our teachers and, and, and the contract that we have. But um, we are working in the communities, we're working with parents, we are in the streets mobilizing, we're doing a lot of research, and we have a really good communications team, and we have an organizing team. So it's, it's not, we're not a service union, we're a social justice activist union, and that has been the key to our success. Excellent, that's great. And in thinking about, um you know, the context of Chicago, how can you maybe extrapolate some of the lessons or the key lessons for, for the success and also, you know, the lessons learned as you go, of course, right. um, from Chicago that you, you think would be relevant to our context? Well, one of the things that, um, you know, the media and the people that are against us have tried to portray Teachers Union as nothing but self-serving for the adults. It's all about their salary and they want to have easy conditions and summer's off. And so we flipped that upside down and said, no, we care dearly about our students. We care dearly about the conditions they come from because there's a lot of poverty in Chicago. And we are fighting for the schools that they deserve and the city that they deserve. And this is about fighting for the low income children that we serve in Chicago. And we did that through being in coalition with all the nonprofit community organizations that serve um, the kids in the communities and work with the parents. And that brought in also a lot of parents. And so it was a popular movement around social justice. Um, and teaching was, is what the teachers do during the day, but this was not about what we were, we were doing. This is about the kids, and this is about improving the communities in Chicago. And through that, we have massive coalitions um, because everyone does agree, because this is what is actually needed. Excellent, that's great. And, and talking about that, can you just briefly tell us what are some of the key priorities that were identified by, by your union that kind of resonated with um, the audience and the people that you were working with? Um, well, one thing I didn't um, articulate it um, totally specifically in my speech, but I um, touched on it a little bit, is um, our kids need wraparound services. They need nurses. They need health care. We have um, you know, through the privatization, the schools are trying to, it's, it's bare bones, they're trying to eliminate everything. Our kids are coming to school um, hungry and tired, and you can't teach under those conditions. And yeah. so we need to bring, we need social workers in our schools. We need uh, what we call, I don't know if you call it up here, this, but we call it wraparound services. Yeah. Um, and you get that by partnering with community-based organizations and, and health clinics and, and things like that. Um, I think when I said, um, I mean, the thing that woke up the audience or whatever got the audience most excited is when I said it's about the poverty. I mean, socioeconomics is linked to academic achievement and to pretend otherwise is just ridiculous. So we have high expectations for all our kids, but we're not going to say that this rich kid and this low income kid are, are entering school at the same level. I mean, they can't be expected to have the same outcome when they don't have the same inputs. And yeah. so we want to level the playing field and we want the low income kids to have the inputs to level the playing field um, to, to make education better for everybody. And that's excellent because oftentimes the conversation, we're, we're, we're never talking about the social determinants of health, we're talking more about achievement or performance, but we're not looking necessarily at the root causes. So yes. it's so great that you, you your organization has had you know, created a lot of visibility around the importance of looking at the root causes. And you've, you've touched a little bit on the who, who has been involved. Um, but oftentimes people think, well, it's just a teacher's union. Who are the players and how, how do you branch out as an organization um, to connect, you know, to connect the dots around those social determinants of health? Well, we have, um, we actually, the, the caucus that led to um, the union becoming a social justice union was part of a thing called the grassroots education movement, which was a co coalition, equal coalition, not dominated by anybody, with these nonprofits that are involved in education, but involved in housing, they're involved in healthcare, they're involved in um, you know, fighting domestic violence, they're involved in immigration rights, 
all, all of the issues that affect our, our kids in Chicago. Um, and so they were always working in partnership and then that got cemented when um, the union took office and now they have a community board which um, we're actually accountable to and they help um, drive our agenda um, because they're, they're on the streets. Our, our teachers, you know, they teach in the communities, but they're not on the streets the same way our community partners are. And so it's the coalition with the community partners that's key. Excellent. That is so great. Thank you very much, Sarah, for sharing your insights and thank you everyone. Thank you.